Hello, welcome to part 2 of this Desproto coat of arms tutorial video. We'll continue where we stopped part 1. All toolpath for the relief, relief geometry have been calculated, roughing, semi-finish and finishing. I'll just make those three operations invisible in order to again see our geometry. What we will do in part 2 of this uh, tutorial is add some graphics on the ribbon, uh, some logo and add some graphics on the shield. We, are, we're, we will again be using Desproto Lite. So what I start to do is make a 2D operation in order to have a Desproto, Desproto logo at the ribbon. Right mouse click, add 2D operation, I call it DP logo and I double click to enter the parameters. I have to browse a DXF file and I prepared one. I called it the logo along curve as it needs to be curved the text to nicely follow the ribbon. But you can see the position and the size are not yet correctly. In a top view I can see it better. I prepared it OK. However, what we did is we scaled the, the geometry and obviously we need then to apply the same scaling factor for a 2D operation. Now it's, you can see it nicely suits the geometry. I can zoom in. More lines are present already. This has been prepared for a cutter with a certain diameter. Also extra lines have been added. Care is taken for the cutter compensation. The Desproto 2D functionality is very simple. In fact it will add like a pen plotter and the cutter, the center of the cutter, will just follow those lines, nothing more. So you need to take care and prepare a correct file. For instance, also this curvature I have added in Rhino by uh, flowing the text along a curve. You have the same type of functionality in Adobe Illustrator without any doubt. So you end up with a 2D file on the correct position and we want to convert that to a toolpath. In order to do so, we need to know the cutting depth and so I need to know the Z height of this ribbon surface and I can easily check that by looking at it from the front, zooming in and as here in the right bottom of my screen you can see the X, Y, Z coordinates when I position my mouse cursor at the, this surface you can see that it is at minus 4 millimeters. So now that I know that I know that I want to machine the logo at a depth of half a millimeter, so I have to set my cutting depth to minus 4.5 millimeters, and I need to select a correct cutter, a flat tip of 1 millimeter it is, uh, reset minus 4.5, OK, and I can calculate toolpath. And I don't see any toolpath, which makes perfectly sense because the toolpath will be hidden below the surface here as they are a half millimeter deeper than the surface. In order to convince you that it's really correct, I will calculate toolpath at minus three and a half. And you can see they're just above the surface now. So be reassured when you enter minus four and a half here the cutter will just remove half a millimeter of material and your logo will be present on the ribbon. So far the 2D geometry. Continuing with the bitmap here, I want to use a bitmap and convert that to a relief by converting gray values in the bitmap to Z heights in the geometry. Well, our first three operations already have removed all material here, so the only option that we have here now is make a negative relief here, so by removing material. Okay, we can do that. I add a bitmap operation, right click on the part level. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Uh, remove, yes. Right click, add a bitmap operation. That's what I wanted to do. I call it the desk proto 
clock because I want to use the alarm clock. Double click, browse, and here is a bitmap file for my alarm clock. And it will be shown on the screen right here. It's not the correct position, it's not the correct size. So first thing what we want to do, I make a top view, I put it aside a bit and I enter the bitmap operation parameters and next I enter the bitmap settings which is the place where we can make all settings for the bitmap. Okay, I make it a custom size and I've seen that my height is about 85 millimeters so when I apply it I have a larger clock. Now I have to pan it, I have to translate it to the correct position back to my bitmap settings and I start using the align button. I first put it in the center for both Y and X of the part. Then Desperate will nicely calculate these values for me and when I say apply it's over here X is correct in the center, Y is a bit too large, so I go back, I make the Y value 46, and here I have my apply, here I have my geometry exactly on the correct spot. Okay, now ne next thing I need to do is enter the Z values for this bitmap. What I want to achieve is that the white part of the bitmap is at the same height of this shield and that the blacker the bitmap is the more material will be removed from the shield maximum depth about one and a half millimeter so this surface we already checked that was at minus 4.5 millimeters which is the depth I will take the Z value I'll take for white black will be one and a half millimeters more this is wrong, this was 0, 4.0 and 1.5 millimeters more is minus 5.5. .5. Now I have set all values and here you can see the bitmap is no longer visible. You can still see two corners as it's hidden below the surface. What I next still need to do is select a cutter. I'll use the same one and a half millimeter bull nose that we used for the rest of the, the finishing of the relief and I make it also just as accurate because that will be needed for this relief and I can say calculate tool path only that operation that's okay. It's quick and here you can see what happens these tool paths are just a few tenths of a millimeter above the surface here. I can show you that by making a side view and zooming in on that area. You can see the tool paths are just a bit above the area here and the rest of the tool path will sink into the geometry so won't be visible. What I can do for you to show what will happen is create a simulation. Uh, I'll just have to switch off the 2D only for the bitmap. I create a simulation which will take some time and I will just interrupt the uh, video for a short while. So resuming the Simulation has been calculated now, only obviously you cannot yet see it, so I again double click for the subjects, I switch off the geometry, I switch off the tool path, and it takes some time drawing this, but now you can see the re relief that has been calculated by converting the gray values to Z heights and this will also be visible in the resulting model. I just double click again put off the simulation and again show this was not okay here the toolpath again show the toolpath okay I have the logo and the bitmap and the last thing I need to do is save these toolpath files I call it the logo file yes and make this one visible and I call it write and see file the 
clock file. 